Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'd like to talk about how I've recently been using the Stream Deck as a way of enhancing my orchestral programming workflow, so writing orchestral music using virtual instruments in Logic Pro. The Stream Deck is a control surface with assignable buttons and you can make these do a whole bunch of different things. At its simplest you can execute key commands, launch applications, send MIDI messages, but the thing that I want to focus on in this video is the multi-action function, which is an ability to execute a series of key commands with a single button press. And this comes in really handy for certain bread and butter MIDI editing tasks, which I'll show in this video. So the main kinds of things I'm going to be covering are equalizing the velocities of certain notes. This is especially handy with repeating ostinatos or just parts that you want to sit back in the track and not catch the ear too much. Um, also, editing note lengths and making notes overlap in a predictable way for legato parts. And then finally I'll talk about using this function to split out chords, MIDI chords, and have them be individual regions each with the legato lines so that you can move those over to legato patches if you wish. So without further ado let's get into the first example. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a quarter note quantize, which I have set to a key command. So I'll just do that. For me, it's control shift Q. Then I'm going to equalize all of the velocities using a button on my stream deck. That's a multi-action switch. So I'll just press that. And now if we play it back, we can hear that all of the velocities are perfectly even, as well as the notes being on the grid. And what's nice is now in post, I can also adjust the velocities of these notes without ever having to leave the arrange window. I just do that with numbers on my keyboard. So say I want to make them super loud, I'm going to press zero, which is the loudest velocity. Or I can use, say, three, which is much gentler. So here we are in the Stream Deck app, and this is really easy to just set up any custom key commands, or in this case, a multi-action function, which contains all of these key commands in a sequence. So the first one is pressing P, which will open the piano roll. Then it's doing Command A, which selects all of the MIDI notes. Then it's applying a MIDI transform to the notes, which I'll go through in a second. That's the thing that's equalizing the velocities. And then it's closing the piano roll again. So the MIDI transform function is something that comes up here if we go to functions. These are the ones at the top of the list here that come with Logic, but you can set up your own. And for velocity, I have a bunch of custom MIDI transform uh, presets, and they go through the different um, gradations of velocity strength. Velocity 1 looks like that. Velocity 2, you can see it's a bit higher, value 26, right up to velocity 10, which I actually have assigned to 0, which is the maximum velocity. And so at any point in the piano roll as well, I can also press numbers and it will change the velocities like that. If you have the uh, MIDI already selected as a result of pressing the switch, you can do that outside of the arrange window as well. Once you've set up those MIDI transforms, you go to your key commands window by pressing option K and you type in transform, and these are the ones that relate to the velocity here. So this number here, where it says user preset 3, refers to the level on the list, so the third one down here would be number 3. One thing to quickly note is that the custom MIDI transforms are saved at a project level rather than a logic global level, so you need to import those into any templates that you have or any new project that you have in order for this to work. Luckily there's quite a simple way to do this. If we press F then we can browse to a project which we know has our MIDI transforms already set up and you can go to import project settings and click this little checkbox here and that will import all of those MIDI transforms into your project. Next let's talk about common MIDI editing tasks that are required for working with legato instruments like strings or winds. So I'm going to put in a legato string line using CSS. It's just a violins legato patch. It's currently set to the low latency mode. Um, as a side note I have my negative track delay set up here and I also have record MIDI to track here enabled. I won't go into that 
right now, but that basically ensures that what I play in real time will be reflected in the MIDI. And so I'm just going to play something in now. Okay, so again, first thing I'm going to do is quantize the material. Now I'm going to select all of these notes and hit another multi action on my stream deck, and that's going to do a couple of things which I'll explain in a moment. So you can see that all of the velocities are now equalized, but also it's um, changed the lengths of the MIDI notes, and it's changed it in such a way that they just overlap, which is what we want for legato instruments. The velocity being equalized is useful because different legato transitions are triggered by different velocities, and making them all consistent is a useful thing a lot of the time, um, especially if you're trying to work to the grid, as I am in this case. The last thing that I know that I have to do for this particular sample library is shift the first note of the legato phrase, because if I don't do that, then it's going to be a bit out of time just because of the way that CSS works. So I'm going to do that with another button on my stream deck, which I've labeled nudge. And then that's all I need to do to sort out the MIDI for this. So it should be perfectly in time now. So this was the one that I used to equalize the velocities and make the notes overlap. So here we have number pad 5, which equalizes all the velocities of the selected notes. Then we have force legato. Specifically, it's this one, note end to selected notes, as opposed to note end to following notes, which does something slightly different. Then we have two key commands, which do different things. The first one extends the length of each MIDI note slightly so that they overlap. And the second one deals with any situations where if you have multiple notes on the same pitch that follow after each other, it prevents the previous key command from causing the two MIDI notes to sit on top of each other to overlap, essentially. So it removes overlaps for repeated notes of the same pitch. I'll just show you the key commands in the logic key command window that are being used there. So here's the first one, nudge region event length right by 10 milliseconds. You can assign that to whatever you want. And then the second one, trim note to remove overlaps for repeated. In order to move this first note of the phrase, which you might have to do multiple times if there are gaps in your legato phrase, um, I use, again, a MIDI transform function, which I created. It's called nudge first note, and you can copy the settings here if you wish. This um, value here is ticks. So I've got it moving the first one, adding 230 ticks to the position of the note. On the device itself, I have both of these two commands next to each other, which just makes it kind of easy when I'm doing this, which is a very common task and a very common combination of functions that I need to execute. Here I'm using logic 10, but if you're using logic 11, there's actually a function called force legato with overlaps, which removes the need for those two additional key commands to extend the note and check for repeated notes. A similar button I have set up is for situations where I want to do force legato without overlaps. In this example, I'm using a trillion patch, which I really like, but it's not a legato instrument. Um, so if there are overlaps that are happening after I've quantized the MIDI notes, that can cause a little bit of muddiness or dissonance as you get multiple notes that are close to each other sounding at the same time. So I'll put in a quick bass line now. Okay, so I can quantize that. Again, I don't have to enter the piano roll in order to do that. In this case, I'll just use my quarter note quantize key command. And then I'm going to press this button on my stream deck, and that's going to set the velocities to be equal and also um, trim the note lengths so that they don't overlap, but they are right up next to each other. Okay, and that's done. And then I can just continue working in the arrange window and just like the first example, I can adjust the exact velocity by using the number keys on my keypad. So one really common scenario when I'm working on orchestral music is I've put in some chordal parts on, for example, a ensemble string patch or a French horns patch, and that's really helping me kind of visualize the arrangement and make progress, but at some point I want to split the MIDI out so that I've got individual lines for each of the horns or string parts, 
that I can then assign to different legato instruments, legato tracks. Um, and this is an area where using the stream deck is super helpful because it can really drastically reduce the number of moves that you have to make to achieve that outcome. So let me demonstrate how I do that. So I'm going to play in a simple string part using a string ensemble patch. I'll just say that this method works best for simpler parts where you're very consciously keeping the number of voices in the chord the same as you're playing it. So in your head you know it's a three-part thing or whatever, and um, the parts aren't kind of overlapping too much, otherwise logic gets a bit confused. So here we go. So I'm going to do a few operations on the MIDI at this stage first before I split anything out. So first I'll just quantize the material using quarter note quantize. Then I'm going to nudge the first note of each of these phrases because I know that's going to be required by CSS just so that it stays in time. And then I'm going to just go through and use my button that I showed you before to equalize the velocities and also trim the note lengths so that they just overlap a tiny bit. Um, and that's all nice and clean. Um, and this first note needs to be set to the same velocity as well. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Now I should be able to come out of the piano roll um, and I'm going to press my Stream Deck button that's splitting out the MIDI notes. It's designed to work from the Arrange window, so that's why I came out. That just makes the button a little bit more flexible for a variety of situations, but I'll press it now. And as you can see, we've got the three different voices here. So what I need to do now is drag these out to different legato instruments within my template. I might decide that I want to copy over the CC data to these other ones. So if I wanted to do that, I could just select the CC data like that and then paste it. Um, I'm using paste at position there, which is another key command you can set up, which I have set to control V. So I'm going to give this top part to the violins, maybe double that in violin 2, and then this one can go to violas, and then this bottom one can go to cellos and basses, I think. I can use my hide empty tracks button on my keyboard, which is another assignable key command to just focus our view slightly. There's also a key command for renaming the regions according to the track name, so I'll just do that. And it sounds okay. Obviously it would sound a lot better if I put in vibrato information and also performed the dynamics of each part individually, but I've, I'm now in a good place to do that. So without further ado, let's look at the button which I set up in order to do that splitting out of the MIDI. So here's the button. If I double click it, we get the list of actions. It's quite a long one. So first of all, it opens the piano roll, then it's selecting all the MIDI notes within that region. Then this is a key command, which is a custom key command I set for an action called set MIDI channel to voice number. Here it is. You can set that to whatever you want. Um, that's going to look at the voices within the chord. So if it's a three part chord, voice one would be the top and voice three would be the bottom and assign those notes different MIDI channels. Then it closes the piano roll and then it applies a command to the region, which splits out the MIDI to new tracks according to the MIDI channel that was set in the previous command which I have set to control option command X. Then it's pressing the down key, which in this case selects all of those regions again. Then it's opening the piano roll again. Then it's selecting all the notes again. And then it's doing the same key command as before, assign um, MIDI channel to voice number. So for me, that's control option command V. And what that does is assigns everything back to channel one, which means that it plays back correctly. If you don't do that step, then you won't hear some of the voices in the playback. Um, and then it closes the piano roll again. And then we're left with these three MIDI regions here, which are ready to be dragged over to new legato patches. So there you have it, a couple of my favorite tricks using the stream deck to trigger multiple key commands so that I can just compose that a little bit faster, um, take care of the technical details that need to be taken care of, and focus on writing good quality music. If you'd like to see a more detailed breakdown of the other functions that I have assigned to my stream deck for music production, drop me a comment. 
or any other questions that you have, let me know below. And thank you very much for watching. Happy composing and see you on the next video.